restrictions we're going to try to take care of. My name is Pat Gear, and I'm the chairman of the South Atlantic uh, Fisheries Board. And I'm going to change the agenda up quite a bit today to deal with those time restrictions. So um, this meeting is mostly just going to be an informative meeting. Um, and we have Heather Blau with us today, who's with the South Southeast and 20. So Heather, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So as noted, we just recently developed a draft strategic plan to cover the next five years, beginning in fiscal year 2016. I believe each of you received a copy of the complete draft plan in your briefing books. We're requesting comments and input on the plan through mid-July, so I appreciate this opportunity just to review our strategic goals at a very high level and try to address any questions you may have so that uh, you can provide input for us to consider as we finalize the plan late this summer. As the federal budgets have declined or flattened out over the last several years, our leadership has directed us to focus our efforts on two core mandates. The first is the productivity and sustainability of fisheries and fishing communities. And the second is the recovery and conservation of protected resources. This planning exercise that we're undertaking is just one component of a larger national effort that's designed to ensure all of the agency's programs and activities are effectively aligned with those two core mandates, and also to ensure that our decision-making and prioritization processes are more open and transparent to the public. Because our, we work with our uh, regional fishery management councils to identify fishery-specific priorities, and with our federal action agency partners and uh, other partners to identify protected resources priorities. We didn't try to capture in our draft plan all of the activities that we intend to accomplish over the next five years. Rather, we focused on identifying operational and programmatic strategies that will help us to address some key challenges so that we can operate smarter and ultimately be more effective over the long term. So we kick-started the initiative by identifying five key challenges or focus areas to cover uh, during the five-year planning period. The first is to meet the increased demand for ESA and EFH consultations. Overall, our agency's ESA consultation workload alone has increased over 130 percent over the last few years, and this increase has disproportionately impacted our region, which received over half of the consultation requests in fiscal year 2014. So combined with reduced funding levels, this has made it really difficult for us to meet the expectations of our federal action agency partners and our constituents, and also to participate and support in the national level initiatives that are aimed at further streamlining our federal permitting processes. We currently have a, a consultation backlog of about 600 at this time, which is re really placing a strain on, on the region. As we work to address that consultation backlog, we're also bracing for an influx of large-scale coastal restoration projects to be funded by the the Restore Act, the Natural Resource Damage Assessment, and Clean Water Act settlement agreements related to the Deepwater Horizon event. And those projects will provide us a real opportunity to improve the status of our resources in the Gulf, but also require considerable effort on our part to ensure that we're effectively engaging in the permitting process, that the projects are science-based, and, and that we don't become a, a real bottleneck. With respect to fisheries, we've uh, completed the process of meeting our annual catch limit mandates under the Magnus and Stevens Act, and we're seeing some real improvements as fisheries transition from overfished to rebuilt status. But this is understandably creating expectations for increased fishing and business opportunities, and we're having difficulty meeting those in some fisheries. We're seeing increased scrutiny of the science underlying our management decisions, um, particularly as we implement the new science-based annual catch limit requirements under the Magnus and Stevens Act. And finally, we're also required or challenged to provide the same or even additional services with less resources, which is requiring us to think hard about 
how we can accomplish more with less, and also to be more strategic in how we allocate the limited resources that we do have. Back one. So with that in mind, we've identified five strategic goals for the five-year planning period. The first is to improve our organizational effectiveness. The second, to promote economically vibrant fisheries and communities. The third, to improve the scientific basis for managing our trust resources. The fourth, to leverage resources in support of our organizational priorities. And the fifth, to maximize the benefits of our ESA and EFH consultation resources. There's no significance to the order of the five goals. Each of them is equally important, and each has associated objectives and implementation strategies that would be incorporated into our annual operations planning. So the, the first goal aims to improve our organizational effectiveness by establishing systematic processes both to identify and communicate our annual priorities and also to align our resources, better align our resources with those priorities. This involves collaboratively identifying and prioritizing our resource gaps on an annual basis relative to our core mandates, um, looking for innovative ways to fill those gaps within our current budget structure, working to generate support for our priorities through higher level agency planning documents um, and budget requests, being more strategic in how we plan for employee growth through things like uh, succession planning, recruitment, and training strategies, and also looking for ways to better utilize our existing information management resources in support of our priorities. The second goal aims to promote economically vibrant fisheries and communities by better integrating our protected resources, fisheries, habitat, and aquaculture programs in support of common goals. The first objective here focuses on increasing user benefits in fisheries without compromising our conservation achievements. We've had some success with this in the South Atlantic in recent years where we've been able to increase annual catch limits for four snapper grouper species following new assessments. We eliminated the five-month recreational seasonal closure restriction on vermilion snapper, affording fishermen the opportunity to target those during the winter months when many of the other species aren't available. And we also eliminated uh, the prohibition that we had on several deep water snapper grouper species outside of 240 feet after new information indicated that that regulation was having a greater adverse economic impact than we had estimated and was not achieving the intended conservation effect of uh, minimizing bycatch of Warsaw grouper and speckled hind. So we want to work with the councils to look for more of those types of opportunities in the South Atlantic Gulf and Caribbean. No, stay. The uh, second objective here focuses on looking for ways to increase the effectiveness of our habitat conservation efforts by focusing on areas uh, that provide the greatest benefit to our managed fisheries. The third is to better integrate and inform our fishery consultation processes, for example, through uh, implementation of our new policy directive that is aimed at improving our communication and um, cooperation with the councils, regional fishery management councils as we prepare endangered species consultations on managed fisheries. And the fourth is to maximize the conservation gains when we develop regulations to reduce bycatch in fisheries or of fish or protected resources in fisheries by focusing on those fisheries that uh, have bycatch across a, a range of species. Okay. The third goal aims to improve the scientific basis for managing our resources. Um, this is one of the purposes of the agency's broader planning effort is to better synchronize the planning processes of our regional offices and our science centers. The Southeast Fish Fishery Science Center conducted strategic planning several years ago, and they currently have a plan in place, I think, through fiscal year 2018. This goal aims to uh, promote that 
or foster that type of cooperation by establishing systematic processes and using existing um, processes to help us identify joint science priorities. In short, we'll communicate those joint science priorities to our partners and the public, along with others that we identify through the CDAR, uh, Regional Fishery Management Councils, and other priority setting documents like our habitat assessment improvement plans. We'll use feedback from that exercise to identify the top science needs for each of our program areas work with all of our potential science providers to uh, try to meet those needs, and then try, try to address any remaining gaps in-house to the extent that we can with our available resources. The fourth goal aims to leverage resources in support of our priorities, both by increasing the use of partnerships and alliances like our regional collaboration teams and Southeast Aquatic Resources Partnership to help us accomplish some of the things that we may no longer to be able to do on our own. Also by promoting uh, public stewardship of our resources through increased communication, outreach, and education. And finally, the fifth goal aims to maximize the benefits of our ESA and EFH consultation resources by focusing our engagement on those projects that high, have the highest, greatest potential uh, conservation impact. So the objectives and strategies here uh, mainly focus on streamlining our consultation processes, which will both improve customer service and achieve greater conservation benefits through efficiencies. We've made uh, quite a bit of progress already on this issue. We're working with our federal action agency partners to identify priority projects. We've reorganized internally our protected resources division, created a new coral branch, and secured funds for four new positions, each of which will have ESA consultation responsibilities. We recently backfilled our ESA Section 7 coordinator position, which was vacated late last year due to retirement. And we're completing new programmatic ESA consultations and also general concurrence documents for EFH, which will help us to uh, manage more efficiently some of the more routine items that we consult on. So we've made a lot of progress in this regard, but still have a lot of work left to do to effectively address our our large consultation backlog and also prepare for the influx of projects and consultation requests that we expect related to the Deepwater Horizon event. So all of our, our partners, um, this, our success in achieving all of these goals will depend on our partners including this board and the commission and uh, we're very interested in hearing your thoughts and feedbacks both on our strategic goals and um, the other ideas and concepts in the draft plan. The comment period is open through July 11th and there's a uh, the complete draft plan as well as an online comment form available on our website. You can also email comments directly to me at the address listed listed above and we will definitely take all of your input and ideas into consideration as we work to finalize the draft plan late this summer for implementation next year. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'll take any questions. Thank you very much, Heather. Any questions for Heather? I see Will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Heather, for the presentation. Um, where in the scheme of, of goals and objectives does the uh, <clears throat> oil and gas initiative off the South Atlantic fit? I guess I could see several places where it, where it fits, but I'd like to hear you respond. So we would be involved in that and, you know, a consultation capacity at the regional office, and that is one of the primary focus areas of the next five years to try to um, manage more efficiently some of these routine informals uh, that we're uh, dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, which is creating such a backlog and really distracting from our participation and early engagement in those larger, more important projects. So hopefully if you know we implement this effectively, it will free up some time and let us focus on that and other 
large scale proposals. Anybody else have questions for Heather? I see Dr. Daniel. Can I let Michelle ask a question first? I certainly can. I Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Michelle Duval, North Carolina Marine Fisheries. Thanks for the presentation, Heather. Um, I've read through the plan, and I guess one thing that I didn't see mentioned, and I w would, I guess, encourage you all to do this, but I think perhaps um, working more closely with some of your partners in the Greater Atlantic Regional Office with regard to protected species issues where there's a single population that's being managed throughout its range and um, I think you know we've certainly experienced some significant differences uh, in applications of the ESA to different fisheries for some of those species so I would just encourage you all to reach out to your partners in the Northeast um, as you develop this strategic plan. I appreciate that comment and so you're talking in the sense of creating more or having more consistency and application of the ESA yeah okay and now dr. Daniel yeah hey Heather hi Lewis it's been a long time um, I have two comments one one ride piggybacks on what Michelle just said and one of the real issues that I think we're seeing right now in North Carolina and issues that I believe some of our sister states will begin to see is implementing incidental take permits through NIMPS on some of these protected species that we're dealing with specifically for North Carolina sea turtles and Atlantic sturgeon and what where we're frustrated right now is that we're having we're developing measures to reduce mortalities tremendously so we've seen a huge reduction in mortality of Atlantic sturgeon and sea turtles in gillnets, upwards of 80% reduction in mortality. But the fishery and the state get no credit for that. So it takes the incentive, it's taking the incentive away where we get just as many dead takes and just as many live takes now as we did before. And a single live individual can close a fishery down for months where and, and there's no there's no um, credit given for the the level of the reduction that we see so trying to work with us to try to develop some more flexibility on modifying ITPs and and trying to provide credit where credit is due and the and the Science Center agrees that that credit is is appropriate I think is something that we're desperate for um, in North Carolina um, the other point that I wanted to make, and this is a big issue in North Carolina, as I'm sure it is in other states where the seismic testing is going on, what would be very helpful would be for something to come from NIMPS um, th through probably the center, um, explaining what, the, what, what have you seen in the Gulf? I, I've heard many different stories, and the, the, the literature seems to be confounded or non-existent on the impacts of seismic testing and in the Gulf and what we're hearing on the East Coast is well they're not even having to do federal consistencies anymore to go out and do seismic testing so obviously it has no impact is that is that the case and and what do you all see in the Gulf that we may be able to piggyback on or or learn from on the Atlantic Coast where there really hasn't been much activity so is that information available and and could that be made available to the to the to the Atlantic Coast states? Thanks for those comments. I'm actually not sure what kind of seismic testing information avail oh, that we do have available. Um, I think some of those analyses might be done out of our headquarters office. That's totally something that we can look into and and get back to you and also something that we can think about how to addressing more uh, systematically or formally and in the plan okay Joe just real quick since during the presentation I know in the documentation we there's a mention of Deepwater Horizon and the finalization of that whole issue that's been going on possibly some monies coming back from that from arbitration will that will those monies 
be directed just for the golf section or is, those, is that something that's going to be available for all three sectors to include Caribbean South Atlantic um, since that is specifically mentioned in here is it isolated to the golf only or is what comes out of that going to be spread across the whole area those those funds are going to be limited to to the golf they're for you know restoration efforts to um, resolve some of the issues that this bill you know created in the Gulf so uh, some of them will be allocated among the five Gulf states so Florida would definitely get a piece but I believe that their you know activities would be limited to Gulf activities okay anybody else not hearing anybody um, and the deadline is July Ju 11th July 11th is the end of the comment period on uh, on the draft plan okay all right um, Heather thank you very much for coming and, and we know you're you have a tight travel schedule so we appreciate you dealing with our sitting through our men hating meeting and it was interesting uh, learned something that's about men that's one word we use yeah and uh, but we we greatly appreciate you coming today and talking to us and thank you very much sure thing thank you all for your input Bob Thanks, Mr. Chairman. You know, I'm not sure. There have been a couple questions and, and comments, and I'm not sure if the the South Atlantic Board would like to send ASMFC specific comments in on this plan, or if you would rather, you know, comment individually, or you know, Heather receive some of the comments today. Obviously, so we don't have to decide right now. I know we're a bit behind schedule, but that's something that you know, the South Atlantic states and and uh, partners can talk about and see if you guys want to submit something from the commission or do them individually. We can. You know, staff. We can work with Kirby and facilitate that that discussion following the meeting. I think we have, you know, about a month or two okay. months. July. I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah. So we got two months to figure there. it out. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot of the same comments too. Yeah. So it, it, you know, we can do that. And Kirby and I can work on that together if we need to. Okay. Uh, again, thank you very much, Heather. We thank appreciate you. it. All right. Um, moving on. That's that's all we.